Welcome everyone to the podcast. We do have Galvez here, who is a Muay Thai fighter. And essentially, I love his story that I want to share with you guys for the listeners. And he has a great story as well that kind of had him really start out from just understanding the fight game into where he's at right now as a champion. And if you guys get an opportunity to see him, uh, you can also follow him on Instagram. I'll put that on the link as well. But I want to introduce you guys to Galvez. How's your day going so far, Galvez? I'm doing great, man. Uh, how you doing? Doing great here, too. I want to um, share with you, what's your thoughts on, like we were talking about earlier about the losses and MMA yeah. is you still get fights. And I was kind of yeah. curious is why is that so different from, let's like, say, MMA to boxing, where in boxing you have, you know, let's like, say one loss and they're just like, we don't want to give you any more fights or even give you more opportunities like that, that difference in that realm. Yeah, honestly, man, I, I, I haven't dabbled too much in the boxing world myself. So I don't know exactly why it would be, but for, for me, like, I, I just, there's like a pride and like, you never lose. Like it's like perfection mm -hmm. bo boxing, almost like it's like aiming for perfectionism. It seems like, you know, 50, you know, or 40, 49 and one or 52, you know, like they want to have like as little losses as you can. And of course, everybody wants a little loss. No one likes to lose, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's, that's part of the game. Like every, every time I go in there, I'm never like, well, I hope I lose today. Right. I'm always gonna go and do my best, but for some reason, and 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 you know, like, but yeah, like unboxing one loss, and they're like, all right, they still got it, they lose it, like, what's going on? You getting old? Like, you injury or mm. I don't know. I just seen it so much because I've I've actually dabbled in the sports outside of boxing more, Muay yeah. Thai, kickboxing, MMA. So I never really got that that like put drilled into me where it's like, oh, you gotta have be undefeated. You know, undefeated. Everyone thinks undefeated is cool, but like yeah. in, in my sport. Um, there's guys that have 200 fights, you know, and there, there'll be guys that are like the top of the guys and top of the top of the line guys in Thailand. They have like eight losses in a row and they're still the biggest superstar in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like they're still like big stars, you know, they're not like, oh, is he still got it? like sometimes you just have some off fights. Sometimes something happens, you know, like mm. great, like it'd be great. Um, but the thing is in boxing, like they 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 make sure they can win. Like there's no real you, there's no real way of telling if you've challenged yourself with a record with no losses you know what i mean like for me i I'm, my record is 15 and 5 and those five losses happened like i i start off undefeated and maybe i was just fighting a little you know like i, I had something that somebody else had something was missing whatever whatever reason i was winning my yeah. first three fights off the get and then i got my first title shot at 14 months into fighting and then i, I took my first loss and after that i started going i won one i lost one 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 lost two and yeah. I was like, I mean, I got to do something. So you got to address the problems and grow versus some people get into this mentality where they are defeated 100%. Oh, the loss, just they let the loss define them versus where they're trying to find like, hey, what can I do to fix this? How can I resolve a problem? And how can I grow and get better? If this is really what I want to do, you know? Um, so I, I, I'm not sure what it is in the boxing community because I'm not, I know, I don't know if I'm free to speak yeah. <laughs> for them yeah, yeah. but i do know that like, the value of the losses equals like you know like 10 mma losses might equal like one um <laughs> boxing loss you know like you got still we still got superstars and, like cowboy cerrone you know donald cerrone people yeah. still know who this guy is and he can still be a main event co-main event fighting on main cards you know um i mean i and i can't think of anyone like that in boxing because i again i don't follow it that much but i do know that every time i hear a guy loses it starts to go kind of downhill and I did want to share as well, like you're talking about, you know, it was interesting. I was actually looking, uh, you know, through your social media. And I know there was one post that you put up that when you first, I believe, I don't know if it was one of your first losses, but you mentioned that it was a loss, but you were 16 at the time and the person was 26. And I said, oh, Dang, yeah. that is a huge difference for you to with yeah. competition. But what I love is that you still went in and <laughs> got the experience and you got even better yeah. since then. But I wanted to yeah. share what was the story behind that? How did that get set up? Yeah, so um, that was a, a smoker. So anyone who's in the scene is, or for who's not in the scene, mm. a smoker is an unsanctioned fight. Basically, oh. no sanctioning body. The sanctioning body is who works with the state to make sure that it's safe. Mm. So a smoker is basically just gyms getting together and being like, hey, my boy fight your boy coming around this way. And it's just like off the radar. That, that's uh, a way you can get experience with being safe. But back then it was the Wild West, man, that people were breaking their noses. There was an ambulance present. <laughs> um uh so it was i mean for me if smokers are supposed to be very regulated they're not supposed they're supposed to be like semi contact no knockouts where all your protective gear and for me i was 16 i may have been training for a few months at the time but i was just so eager man like i i love fighting i, I felt something 
drawing me to it since I was a kid mm -hmm. and I didn't have the opportunity to do it as a kid. So as soon as I could afford it and I found a place that, it, that did it nearby where I live, mm -hmm. Especially because I live in a small town, there wasn't opportunities yeah. to train. It's not like it was like abundant by any means. So when I found somebody, I was like, "Oh, I want to train. Oh, I want to compete." You know, I, I grew up watching the kickboxing movies and the boxing movies and like these stories of underdogs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I, my, my, my coach at the time who was transitioning from being a fighter into being a coach, he was like, "Man, this guy's having this fight in a couple of weeks." Um, and I was like, "Can I fight?" And he's like, <laughs> mm. I, "I, dude, I, I, you know, I had no." Like I had no reason to get a fight, but I just wanted to. I was like, you think I could do it? I don't know. I just yeah. wanted to compete. And he's like, yeah, like, we'll, we'll, we'll see. And like, he kind of like was iffy about it. But then he asked, then he came back to me like the next day. He's like, yeah, um, it looks like the guy can get you a fight. And I was like, okay. And we didn't know how I was fighting. And that's the thing about these smokers. You know, um, mm. you don't usually know who you're fighting. Um, there's, uh, this is why there's none of these happening anymore. That's more regulated now. Yeah. Uh, this is back in 20... 13 2012 2013 yeah um and uh I, yeah i was in high school training for a few months to show up and i'm like okay i got this right like training for two weeks before the fight even happened and i was uh, so, so eager to get in there i didn't i didn't know the difference you know and, and i didn't and i didn't know that i felt immortal back then you know uh, <laughs> you, you don't, you don't, you don't know funny. it you know people tell yeah. you but you don't know it when you're that young so yeah i get in there and they're like all right you're fighting you're, you're gonna fight at uh 165 and i was like or 155 and i was like okay uh i didn't even make 155 i was lighter i was like 50 oh, something wow. 53 or something and the guy would in at 65 and they're like you guys are about this, the closest that we got in weight so we'll let you fight <laughs> and i think in the commissions if you're if you're heavier than five pounds they won't let you fight but this yeah. is you know no sanctioning body again yeah. so here we are and um i didn't see the guy so the first time i know i was like looking around I was like who's the guy i'm gonna fight who's the guy i'm gonna fight and of course, it's like this scary looking dude, like, you know, kind of hood looking guy, brown pride <laughs> tattooed across his stomach, um, just bulky. You know, like, I was like, oh, no, like this guy looks like tough, you know, yeah. and I get in there um, just scared. And I'm like at my gym, you know, we're controlled and whatever. And I didn't know how to turn that, sh that switch on to like oh, fight, wow. you know. So I had a really rude awakening because this guy had been fighting and he had been known for knocking people out at these events. And he was tough, you know, and he, I felt it. First exchange, boom, boom, I see, just like little lights, you know, I'm like, damn. And it was four ounce gloves. Oh, um, damn. So. Okay. It's um, like probably any gloves on, right? Essentially. Those yeah, four essentially. No, yeah, four ounces, you're basically, yeah, it's like, a, yeah, it's not much more than a regular, like, <laughs> glove that you wear to go snowboarding, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, there's small gloves, like the UFC type of gloves and uh man this guy hit me pretty hard so i was trying to take him down and i got like i probably i took him down a couple of times and and i had a good flurries on him that i landed but from there on he was hitting me and he had his way with me basically for three rounds um you know i fought back um but that was the first fight i got my first fight i got bloody and i was afraid yeah. i just i didn't want to i didn't want to quit and i remember feeling like i don't want to quit but i also I do want to quit. Like someone please stop, but I don't want to stop mm -hmm. it. But someone please stop it. You know? <laughs> um, so I was like afraid. Yeah, man. Uh, you yeah. know, it's just I, I really don't know how to describe it to you. You know, it's crazy. I didn't want to think I was a wuss, but also well, I was afraid. <laughs> no, that's the thing too. You you were mentioning like you is like your first time kind of going into this, but you also didn't have the experience to prepare. And I wanted to ask you like, what goes into really warming up before a fight to get into the zone? Because you mentioned that. And I'm kind of curious, yeah. is what do you do now to like get into the fighter mindset? Because now that's not, you just got to go in there. Things have to start clicking for you. So what do you do differently? Right. Yeah. So for me, I don't really have like a set ritual when I mm -hmm. go into fights because then you, then like, you, I, I'm not, then you get kind of get superstitious. And like, if I don't have this, if something's missing, say like, if I'm not wearing my lucky underwear or if I'm not wearing my lucky <laughs> this or that yeah. or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, um, and you start to get into this thing where it's like, oh, I'm, am I going to lose or right, whatever? Like, I don't warm up the same way twice. Like, I just kind of go by how I feel. I'm not like, okay, I'm going to get a sweat on. Sometimes I want to sweat a lot. When I warm up, hit pads, crack pads hard. Sometimes I don't yeah. want to sweat at all. Sometimes I want to go into the ring, like, almost cold. Um, sometimes I just sleep the whole time. Sometimes, like, this last fight that I had this last yeah. weekend, I was smiling, like, like, grinning. I couldn't fall asleep. I just couldn't. I was just so happy and bouncy and giddy. And there's other fights where like you can't wake me up i'm like a rock 
Um, so I, it's very different. I just know that mm -hmm. the thing that I try to channel when I go into the ring is me being happy because something that I've come to learn is that my, for me, I'm a lot more dangerous when I'm happy than when I'm angry. So I think as I'm developing as a, as a fighter, my life is getting better and better. I, I'm living my dream more and more and I'm starting to become more and more happy. So now I'm fighting like a rabid dog to stay happy, you know, because for a large part of my life, I did, I felt like I was, I, I wasn't happy for a lot of it. You know, I was like angsty and like, I felt like overlooked and um, just lonely a lot. So now that I'm starting to feel like the things that I've always wanted, like, man, I'm starting to become more dangerous than ever because I'm happy now, you know? And like every time I'm happy, I try to channel this energy because that when you don't start thinking about it, just try and get in the motion. Because if you try too hard for something, that's, and you focus on mm -hmm. one thing, you, 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 you can't zoom out, you know? You're so zoned into this one thing, you can't see the other openings that are, that, that are there. So uh, I just really try to channel, um, channel something happy. And like, it's like, I'm here, I'm gonna hit somebody hard because that's something that I have a hard time with is is realizing that I'm gonna go in there and I have to actually hit somebody hard and try to try to hurt them, you know, because I, I I don't want to do that. It's part of the sport, you know. That's never anything personal. Yeah. But um sometimes that that's that's the thing that kind of takes a little bit for me, even once I'm in the ring to get so I'm like, okay, I'm happy and then I have to win this fight. That's it. Um that those are the only two things from there. It, it changes, man. It's like a Rubik's cube. We just gotta solve it on by day. So um but I really yeah, love but that back though. Then, the, the joy side you're mentioning was just like, you're right. When you come in there, it's less pressure on yourself having to be, a, like you said, you're having an angry approach. But at the same time, like you're saying, you're already living it and you're already enjoying it. And there's this joy yeah. because you're only getting better and better. And that's up yeah. to you when to hang it up. But that's where it kind of, I feel like you're more into, like you said, the mood of it. You know, you're more free loose in your fighting. Yeah. Maybe that's what's leading you yeah. to have more success in the ring. But I, I, that's the first time yeah. I've heard in a while is that joy is what leads you to victory. Yeah. And it, it kind of goes into like that mindless, that, you know, it's like the, the mindless state to talk about an art of war or Bruce Lee, you know, be like water. You can be, a, you can adapt to any circumstances, but if you get too stuck in your ways, that's, that's when you start mm. to struggle. You know, if I'm like, no, I fight good. I fight, there's nothing wrong. I just need to work on what I'm doing more. Then mm. I'm like, closing myself off to new information or whatever I'm doing. So when I'm happy, I don't do things a certain way. And my style is very unorthodox. I don't fight a very traditional style. And a lot of what I do looks sloppy, but it works. So the, and, 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 and what I do, the, the beauty in it is that I find something that works. Sometimes it's not like the most technical punch or strike or whatever. It looks weird, but I find my mark, mm. you know, and, and, and there's nothing there. And there's nothing specific. It's not like, oh, that was a Muay Thai. What was that? I don't know. Like I've been, I've been, <laughs> I've been compared to Roy Jones Jr. It's like, was that some Roy Jones? I, I didn't know who that was till like last year. You know, uh, I was being compared to this guy like five years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah. Was that some Bruce Lee there? Was that this fighter? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm not, I'm such a casual when it comes to like watching. I know the guys that I know, but I don't like know a lot about, you know, the, like enough to mimic fighters like that. So um, sometimes it just comes to me and I was like, okay, I have to do this. I have to do this. I'm looking here. I'm looking here. And then next thing you know, I'm doing something. I landed. I'm like, oh, thank goodness I, I hit him and I didn't get hit. <laughs> right. But versus like now compared to back then, like I remember even my warm up, I like, I might even got too tired in my warm up when I was going for my first fight, you know, and like, yeah. I just didn't know it's your, your first one. But I got I got the pulp kicked out of me, man. Like I was bloody mess. My mom was crying. <laughs> uh, but nobody knew I was 16. So by the end of that, my first fight back then, yeah. I uh, I uh, got fight of the night. Everyone's like, dude, this guy like, you know, went three rounds with this killer. And then when he fought, I was 16. Like, dude, what the heck? You know, and that was just an accomplishment in itself that I didn't leave. I wasn't even aware of. You know, that 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 might that made me kind of a little bit of a standout, even though I didn't yeah. do great. And I continued to do fights, two, three more kind of smokers, two more smokers and one amateur fight to an actual san sanctioning body when I was like a teenager before I took a rib injury and just kind of hung it up for a few years mm -hmm. and decided to be realistic and go to trade school. Let me let me ask you on that, on the rib injury. Uh, you're saying you went to trade school. Kind of like how long was that period for you? So I was a sophomore and junior when i was had those four fights and it wasn't like i was training straight for those two years like hardcore as much as i wanted to i was yeah. in high school you know like there's <laughs> soccer there's football there's your girlfriend there's the homies yeah. um there's your you know family so like you get caught up in so much and also the classes weren't very consistent because 
it was, I, was, I lived in a town where there was 7,000 people and the nearest Walmart was an hour and a half away. Yeah. So <laughs> that, you know, goes to tell you how small it was. So there wasn't always classes to be filled and training for me to, to be part of. So, um, yeah, I was like on and off. And then throughout those two years, I had four fights kind of splattered around. And then when I was kind of like, I was like my senior year of high school, I was 17. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be a pro fighter. I said, when I turn 18, I'm going to sign a pro contract. I'm going to be a pro fighter. This is going to be, this is it. I'm going to live my dream. And I was just so hooked. And I had no reason to believe I was going to be the biggest star by any means. You know, I was a one in three fighter. I was, you know, I was getting hit a lot. I didn't have, I looked sloppy. I just, no reason, no reason to believe I was, I, was, I had any potential, yeah. but that's just what I wanted to do. So that we do this project in high school called the, our senior project where we pick, where we kind of research a career that we're interested in. And we do all the research behind it throughout the year. We do essays, presentations, stuff like that. And while I was getting ready for a tournament for a, a title for MMA, that's where I started MMA. Um, they, uh, I, I was my only sparring partner was a, a guy who had just gotten out of prison. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. So, so he, so he was like, I was frustrating him, like touching him, being light around, control by himself. And then he grabs me because he's so frustrated. Grabs me, knees me in the sternum, super hard. And I'm like, dude, we're supposed to be going light. Like I have a fight next week. And like, I'm like on the ground and I've been kicked and that's plenty hard um, with, with a cup and without a cup. And the, and uh, you know, like sometimes like it hurts, but it goes away. The rib injury, yeah. it stayed, man. Like there was no like, oh, it's better now. It's like, ah, oh, it's like a constant burn. And it was bad for months. Like I couldn't properly work out for like three months. And that wasn't even, even then it was mediocre to work out. And then like six months, I was like, okay, I got this. So it was like a fractured sternum yeah um and um yeah so that hurt and i was like okay i can't do this i have to redo my project and at the time i was also into cars like i drove sports cars and street bikes <laughs> and i was into that type of stuff so i was like okay well why don't i just work in this stuff i don't want to be a mechanic but i would like to be like a tuner you know mm. work on cars performance cars so i looked into schools and uh, eventually, the, I saw that there wasn't that much money, and that that was something I was very concerned about, right? Because you yeah. you're thinking about what is everyone going to think of me? My teachers are already telling me I'm a loser, and my peers already think I'm a loser, right? And like, I'm not, I don't get good grades, and so I want to like, I, I want to feel like I am doing something with my life because these kids, like, they're all going to college, or they've been thinking about it for a longer time, or they're at least going to a college to to where someone thinks they're doing something right. Versus yeah. any road that I took. I felt like everyone was looking at me like, come on, man, like, why would you choose that route, you know? Mm. So it was almost like I was being looked down upon because yeah. I had an, 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 a different approach to my life and the way I wanted to live it because I didn't want to go the traditional way, like college or trade school or like work or whatever, you know, or military yeah. or whatever the choices, traditional choices are. Yeah. So um, I decided cars and I looked at a performance thing and I was like, well, what if I can't get a job in a performance shop because they're so far and few? So I decided to do a full-on trade school and take a two-year program for automotive and diesel technology at UTI yeah. in Sacramento. It's Universal Technical Institute. And that, that took me a couple years to get done. And uh, as soon as I graduated, I kind of got into this like entrepreneur type of kick. Mm. And I started like, I want to make money. And even yeah. when I was in school, I wanted to make money. So I was, I was making like 3K a month, but I was eating good. You know, I was drifting. I had an ex spare car. <laughs> I was... You know, I was going to see my girlfriend the other weekend who lived four hours away. Yeah. Um, so I'm like putting money in gas and taking out dates and, and hanging out with the homies and eating good food, you know, and like just, yeah. I don't know. I'm, it's my first time being on my own. So, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so, so, but after that, I was like, man, I want to make money. I don't want to just make the 40, 60 K starting off in the, mm -hmm. in the industry for automotive and diesel tech. Right. So I started kind of dabbling in different stuff in entrepreneurship, um, stock trading, uh, Forex, uh, multi-level marketing, public speaking, oh, wow. um, just sales, product development, app development. And I was just kind of like trying different things and did that for a year. But the thing I realized though, yeah, was through that journey was that I always wanted to make enough money so I can train whenever I want and be a world yeah. champion and be the best fighter in the world. And I was like, that's my end goal. And around that time I was like 20, 19, 20. Dang. So I was like, and that was a time, at the time, there were some fighters in the UFC, Stage North Cut, Paige Van Sant. I think the Olympics or something might have been happening around that time mm -hmm. as well. And I was thinking, like, I was watching, and I'm hearing their ages, and I'm like, man, people my age are doing great things. Mm -hmm. And that's when it hit me. I was like, you know what? I can just be a broke fighter. I don't care if I have to live in my car or under a bridge or whatever. Um, I've heard plenty of stories where people don't have money to start, but they do it. And then the money comes. If they, tr if they really trust that, the money will come. 
So I just, one day I was determined to find my gym and I, you know, I was, I was starting to make pretty good, pretty good money. I was starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel for entrepreneurship and making some money to where, you know, I could make a good, good little chunk of change. Yeah. But I was like, that's going to take another year or two. So mm. I'm just going to fight now. I need my youth more than I need the money. I so see. I just started training. Yeah. Moved back in with my parents, uh, you know, sold my car and here I am five years later. I just never looked back as soon as I decided to, to, to go on this journey. What would you say to your younger self about kind of like that, that switch that you're doing now? Did you ever expect yourself when you're like say even 16 to see yourself today being a champion and just, you know, kind of taking a risk just to kind of pursue your career? Do you think, do would your 16 yeah. yourself imagine that? Yeah. But yeah, man, I, I imagined all this. I, I envisioned this and I, I, I really, it's a manifestation of the years, like a life long journey that I wanted to do this because I wanted to be the, the best fighter. I wanted to be a champion. And I, and I did, I was, I would talk about it. Like, like I was in high school, like, man, I'm going to be the next guy. I'm going to be on tough. You know, what's going to love me. Uh, you know, I'm going to be the best fighter. I'm going to take over 55. Maybe I'll even go down to 45 to take that belt, you know, before it had ever been done. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, man, I, I talked about it. Like, like I, like it was already happening when I was in high school, you know, and, and, and people remember me even in trade school and stuff are telling me like, yeah, dude, I remember you be shadow boxing and talking about fighting all the time. Like I would wait to be crossing the street when I had to train in a couple years, maybe. And I was sitting there shadow boxing. I was like, man, I just miss it. And anytime <laughs> anyone was like, man, I box. I was like, oh, you want to train some time? Or I was always so eager to like kind of train, but just with school and work and stuff never happened. But man, I would tell my, my I would honestly tell my, yeah. my younger self the same thing my teachers told me and that's be realistic, but also the, with a twist because they tell me be realistic. They tell you be realistic, but they don't tell you, hey, give it a go. Chase your dreams for, give yourself a plan though. Like there's gotta be an expiration. If it's not working by this date, I will grow up. And that's what I did this time when I started training. So I made a five-year plan. Um, I was uh, a month before my 21st. I'm about to be 26. So my five-year plan actually just finished last week. Yeah. And by and there was a lot of details, a lot of things that I wanted to get done in that five year plan. Yeah. But the ultimate thing that I wanted to do was figure out if I can hang with the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And now I am ranked number one in the world by the IKF International Kickboxing Federation. I'm ranked number one in the world by them. I just won my number one spot in Freedom Promotions, uh, number one in the nation. Um, so uh, I think I, I think I got a future in the sport now. You know. But I, but if I wasn't, if I wasn't like people, I was just talking to my coach about it last week. And he's like, so you were fighting like it was your last fight. You were fighting like you're going to lose it. And that's why I fight so hard versus not like, well, we'll see. We'll take my time. Oh, it doesn't matter. You know, I was like, no, we have to, this, this has to get done or else I'm going to give it up. And because if it was last week, if I wasn't doing good in my fighting career, I would have quit fighting and I would have gotten an adult job. I would have grown up by, by my terms. <laughs> so, i love that because yeah that's good that sound advice that you're sharing for the listeners there is that yeah have a plan like you set up a five-year plan it was crazy to hear that last week was your your fight your big win and then that's something that you've made you think okay i can now maybe extend or create a new five-year plan where you're gonna go move yeah. up because that's gonna be my next question too is um mm -hmm. are you looking to possibly go to like a different promotion something like the ufc that's popular to try to mix it up with mma yeah. So I'm actually starting my, I've been, I've been practicing um, on my ground game and wrestling for the last maybe year or so. Wow. I don't know, but, but I've also, I've fought nine times in nine months in the last year. Like if I have a 60 day medical suspension, I have a cut with, you know, I have 11 yeah. stitches from my last fight. So Crazy. I can't fight. I would have, I, I was supposed to fight in New York three weeks after. So basically two weeks from now, yeah. for a national title. And that would have been 10 months, 10 fights in 10 months. Dang. So, um, you know, so it's, a, it's hard going into like focusing 100% on this Muay Thai thing because I'm a Muay Thai fighter. Yeah. I'm a stand-up fighter. Um, and also getting get my, my groundwork in because like I'm recovering. It's, oh, fight, fight camp again. Oh, you can't get hurt in jiu-jitsu. We got to go light. You know, so it's like it's been a slow, long, slow burn in order yeah. to make my transition. But I am planning on transitioning into MMA, back to MMA, um, maybe in the fall, uh, summer or fall this year. And then um, ultimately making my pro debut, because if you go pro in one, you go pro in everything. So I can't just yes. be a pro Muay Thai fighter, an amateur MMA fighter. So I'm going to I'm going to make sure that I can beat pros as an amateur versus going pro and 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 and, and rolling the dice. I want to like since I only got one shot at this, you know, like and, and I this is I started late anyways. I, I yeah. feel like I missed some, some good training years. 
So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it right because I want to get one time. And as a pro, like like we've talked, we, we talked, started talking about it. Yeah. You know, losses count. You know, as an amateur, like I'm 15 and five, but that 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 record starts over once I go pro. No one's even going to really remember that. You know, they're not going to remember I have five losses. But when I go pro, like every fight counts, right? So right now I'm like, okay, if I lose as an amateur, okay, fine, whatever. But I can still dial some things in, and it's not going to haunt me for the rest of my career or whatever. Yeah. I mean. Um, and it's harder to get fights if you start off with losses. So right now, I'm, I just want to get to the point where I can beat pros as an amateur and be confident when I go pro. And that way, I do it right, and I and I set myself up for success because I just don't, I don't. I'm not just like an enthusiast or a hobby. Like I am, right? But yeah, I, this is my career path. Like I don't do anything else. I don't have another job. I only train day and night. You know, I train four to six hours a day. I, wow. you know, and I work just to keep my 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 career afloat. I'm going to I'm planning trips to Thailand so I can just focus on training there. Uh, you know, six to eight hours a day, um, and training with the best. And and I travel to different gyms in the Bay Area because that's where I live in the Bay Area. I travel all over to to make this happen for myself. So um, I'm making sure that I set myself up for success because I'm 26. You know, by 35, it'll probably be time to start winding down, winding down my fight career. So mm -hmm. I need to make sure I make the maximum. Uh, I, I take the maximum opportunity now. And I need to because that, that way, when I go pro, they can be like, "Where has this guy been? Who the heck is this guy?" And I'll be like, "Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I've been chilling the amateurs, baby. Love that. But here I am, you know, <laughs> giving my money." <laughs> true, true. And let me ask yeah. you. I know you're mentioning about 35 is when you start to wind down. Um, and just in fighting in general, just because of all the, I like to say the mileage you put on your body from all the battles you've had. What is a post, are you thinking about post business or post opening your own gym after your career is over? I mean, I, I guess, I don't know if it's safe to say it'll be, it'll be over at 35. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, 35 is what I'm giving myself more or less to, it's going to be like, I got a five-year plan from here to 30 yeah. and 30. 30 to five as another five-year plan. And I'm going to be like, am I going to be still like a contender? But at 35, I'll kind of feel it out because I don't get hit very much anymore, which is wow. a good thing, you know? People who get hit a lot, they have shorter careers. So true, I'm trying true. to move in a way where I don't get hit very very much. That way my career can be longer and I can maximize, you know, my star power when I get to that peak. To get to that peak. So yeah. what I'm doing right now is like 35 is where I see most people kind of like have their peak or yeah. kind of start to taper down. Even if it's a little bit, they still do so 35 to 40 is where i'm going to be like okay am i am, am i gonna how much more am i gonna put myself through this am i gonna be fighting mma am i just gonna go back to muay thai because it's a little bit less strainful in my body um so yeah so I, around that time i'll be figuring out what i want to do i'm already thinking about business ideas now because i kind of grew up in in entrepreneurship uh self-development kind of stuff since i was a kid i was kind of bred into that like some of the first books i remember reading was like they can grow rich and like wow. rich dad poor rad and like, like i was like but you know like when i'm supposed to read like magic treehouse or a to z mysteries <laughs> or whatever <laughs> how did you get like, exposed to those books though at like that at an early was it uh did you get exposed in the early in your early 20s or around your mid-20s to those kind of books no i i was exposed oh i was exposed to like four or five years old <laughs> um my oh, parents wow. grew up, my parents kind of bred me to be an entrepreneur like my my i think wow. one of the things i always heard when i was growing up is you're going to be a millionaire by 18 or and then like we extended it when i got to 18 i wasn't a millionaire i was like you're going to be a millionaire by 21 <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so i you know i was basically yeah. expected to be a millionaire by my family hey we're gonna have to push it back to 28 or something <laughs> but uh but yeah i i, I kind of grew up my parents were always kind of like a inscribing this entrepreneur spirit and before it was cool you know um listening to audiobooks going to seminars and conventions with successful people um finding mentors um we're on the road a lot even on school nights we'd be we'd be three to four times a week driving an hour and a half plus uh just one way so you know we'd begin home at three four in the morning sometimes so this like hustler entrepreneurship spirit was ingrained in me as a kid so now like i'm kind of like <laughs> i feel like invincible <laughs> You know, it's crazy, you know, but um, it's good to hear that you were exposed to that by, by your parents. Unfortunately, not a lot of people have that kind of uh, exposure yeah. to something like that. And they're trained by the schools. Even you probably experienced it to be more of an employee. What would you say for someone that is having a hard time to transition into entrepreneurship to, you know, take that risk? What would you what would you say to them or what advice would you offer to be like, hey, when you know, obviously have a safe plan to quit your job, but to really make them do that push to, hey, go chase your dream and do something to fund it yeah. in the meantime like you're doing right now. 
Yes. Yeah. So I would basically like my my ultimate like like I think my advice that sorry I like I'm drinking stuff so I don't, my voice don't cut out but um, yeah. my advice to anyone who wants to really follow their dreams um, would be to give yourself a timeline <clears throat> timeline <laughs> give yourself yeah, a timeline no worries, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because when you give yourself a timeline you have that sense of urgency to get things done because when you work for yourself or you're your own boss it's very easy to get lazy. Mm. It's, it's very easy to hold not hold yourself accountable it's, it's easy to have someone come and like do this do that you know whatever you're doing if you're working an office yeah. job get this paper done by this time someone's setting up the schedule and they're organized everything you have to do versus when you're your own boss you make your own schedule you have to be organized you have to hold yourself accountable you have to make sure things get done so that's the hard part about being your own boss which is you yeah. know myself it's easier because i have a I, i'm just a fighter so it's basically get in camp win fights you know but if yeah. you want to uh, if you want to um chase your dreams and do something kind of out of the ordinary or do something that just maybe isn't in the field your field of expertise I, like or first look like really look into the look into it be realistic with yourself not realistic as in like don't do it but be realistic as in what is my do i have the potential to do this like yeah. be brutally honest with yourself can i do this like like for like for me if i was a horrible fighter right now i would get a job but i probably still have this as a hobby you know what I mean? I wouldn't have gave it like hung up the gloves completely, but I was like, but I, but I would have gave up my dream of being trying to be a world champion or getting to the UFC. So if you are someone who's like, oh, I want, I, I, I'm not that good at this, but I love it. Then okay, like, can you, are you, can you get good enough at it to quit your job and make a living off of this solely, or is it going to be something that like you have a day job and you just do it on the weekends? Um, is it, can it be something, can it, is there money in that field? And if there isn't money, is there potential for there to be money? Um, and then also give yourself a timeline, like a five-year plan, five-year plan, whatever, how many years plan. So you develop a sense of urgency in order for th the things to get done. And you have like little things that you can check off. So you have trackable progress because when you're making progress, sometimes you forget how, where you started. Mm. Sometimes you forget that like, that like you, I mean, for example, I'm going to use fighting, for example, you forget that when you came in, you didn't know how to throw a kick or you didn't know how, how to throw a jab. And, and now you just do, I can call a jab, cross hook kick, and you can do it no problem. But you forget when you when you had to come in in the beginning, you couldn't do that thing, you know. But if but if for somebody else, you have to keep trackable things, or else you forget the progress that you've made. So keep tra uh, like trackable goals, five year plan. Be brutally honest with yourself, and if you if you're good enough to make money, um, in it, then you make it your career. You know, like, go ahead, take the gamble, roll the dice, like live, live like that, because a nine to five will always be there. You know, no one's like, hey, if you chase your dreams, you're never going to get a nine to five again. Like, that's not the rule, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Most no. people have a nine to five, gave up one of their dreams a long time ago. <laughs> you know, yeah, or that's true. one to begin with sometimes, you know, unfortunately. So, I, I, so for me, like, I'm not like, be realistic, get a job. I'm like, no, do it. But if you're going to do it, do it with a sense of urgency and do it to see, do it to the best of your ability. You know, that's my version of be realistic. I'm not like, oh, really? Like, with some, I, I, I remember I was coaching football a few years ago. And this kid's like, man, and we were a small school, like small kids um, and didn't have a great record the year prior to when I started coaching. And this kid's yeah. like, hey, coach, he's I think he's like a sophomore in, on varsity. He goes, hey, coach, I'm going to be I'm going to get the most tackles in the league this year. I'm going to be one of the best linebackers, middle linebackers in the league this year. And I, and I had no reason to believe this kid. But I didn't say, get out of here. I said, all right, show me. And this mm -hmm. is the beginning of the season before. He said, I was like, all right, show me. And by the end of the year, that kid was amongst i think he he got like all league or something as a linebacker he was he was a he got it you know but Amazing. i was like all right show me you know and i'm not like okay be realistic or, you know our team sucks you didn't do that good last year or whatever i could have told this kid to tear him down you know or be realistic like what do you really want to do i'm like no show me let's do this let's get it done because a lot of times people they they project on you what they see about themselves like it has nothing to do with mm -hmm. you like if they don't think they can do it they're like oh dude you can't do it because i can't do it but I, I, I'm some, I'm someone who's like, I think I can do anything. So like, naturally I'm like excited when <laughs> yeah. someone, when someone's like, oh, I can do this. Like, yeah, you can, like you, you totally can. You're just limiting yourself, you know? So um, for me, like, I just think like, if you're going to chase your goals, do it with a sense of urgency and do it like you do love it and do it like, like maybe you're going to lose it. And that's, that's what's worked for me. And I, and I love that too, Robinson, because I was thinking like I'm in banking and there needs to be a sense of urgency to help people in there in the industry. So you build more relationships and it's true, if you fall behind right. in something, then you kind of just do it to yourself because you can't just kind of be kicked back and saying, like, that's another thing about working, like, say, an hourly job or salary is that you're going to get paid regardless, but that also affects your performance. But if it goes backwards, like getting paid commission, almost like a fighter, 
you're going to think more like, I can't really be screwing around. I have to give the best performance, sense of urgency to get the most out of it like you would in a, in a fight. So I kind of see how even in my own job, it's like I can't screw around or else my checks to pay the bills won't be as big. So I can't just be, it's not, uh, it's not middle school anymore. It's not elementary. It's time to be, uh, right. get, get the big boy pants on. But um, I really love that, that you're mentioning about the sense of urgency and even you saying, encouraging the other kids is like, it's it's being limitless you know like and you're right about yeah. projecting you're right because a lot of us maybe when we're younger and from my own experience people will project their own failures to someone who's young or whatever and that can affect somebody but if you were to realize that that hey that's just that person's opinion and you can believe in yourself you will hit a lot more of the goals but like you said is is just doing it just 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 do it um the more you talk about the less yeah. you're going to be uh what's the word uh, taking action on it so I do appreciate yeah. you sharing about that for the listeners out there that to really believe in yourself, but just do it as well. And don't make anything yeah. too, too crazy for yourself. But I wanted yeah. to ask you um, before us, we're nearing the end of the podcast for the listeners. What's something that you would want to share about yourself to them? Like a quality. I, I am not taking anything for granted. Mm. You know, um, it's so easy to take things for granted in your life. You know, um, and even when you are living your dream, it's easy to get caught up in, in like give in like, oh, I have to do this. Oh, I have to do a six mile. Like in my case, I'm gonna speak for myself. I have to do a six mile run. Oh, I have to do uh, nine hill sprints today. And I have to only eat 800 calories when I'm cutting weight or what, you know, like whatever it is, or, or I have to spar with pros that are gonna beat me up for yeah. this. I'm like, I have to, I'm like, I remember when I first started, you know, it's so easy to get caught up in like where you are and like in a moment that like in, in a bad way almost because you're not you're not like um you're 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 like not appreciating the whole, all the steps. And sometimes yeah. you forget where you started. So like and especially now that like even though I am living my life, I'm realizing it's still work, you know. I still have a job. I can't just like not train for 6 weeks, walk into a fight and expect to win. I have to go in there give my best for the six to eight weeks training cap, work my butt off borderline, tear my body apart for that time <laughs> in order to get the, to get the results that I want to get, you know? Yeah. Um, so at this point in my life, I'm enjoying trying to enjoy all of it. Just trying to be in the moment because there's, I mean, there's this quote that I heard. It's like, if you're, if you're worried about the past, you're living, you're, 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 um, you're worried about your, you're living in your memories. And then if you worry about the future, you're, you're living in your imagination. Uh, but if you focus on now, you're living in the present. You know what I mean? Yeah. So true. like that's the this is the immediate the, the most immediate thing that we can do something about this. You know. So um, I think like not taking anything for granted, even when you're doing the things that you love to do. Like it's it's not all gravy. Like I love being a fighter, man. I love going out in the ring. I love talking to people. I love talking doing podcasts. You yeah. know. I love getting new gear. I love talking to sponsors. I love doing media press, all that stuff. But and then it's like I also have to love hitting eight, eight rounds of pads and knowing that I'm not going to feel good at the end of it. I have to run. I have to love running six to 12 miles a day, like a, a day and doing that. You know, I have to, I have to love teaching classes. I have to love doing private lessons. I have to love um, interacting with people in the gym. Even when I'm at my lowest, when I'm cutting weight, I have to love all of it. I have to love cutting weight, which is the most, absolutely the worst part, you know? So, but I have to fo get, focusing on the task at hand it done and i'm not and i'm someone who's like living my dream <laughs> you know and so to to be like ungrateful for the for the things that i'm living the, like the bad things as well I'm like i can't just have the good you know everything is like it's like, like that yin yang that's a pro and a con so right. i'm like i'm someone who 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 believed in myself took the leap of faith and i'm living my dream and i'm also just discovering that it's not going to be all gravy you know like yeah. i said i have losses on my record I have a 60 day medical suspension. I have 11 stitches in my last fight. <laughs> I, um, you know, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm on a, but, but, but along with that, I'm on a nine fight win streak. I won three titles last year. I'm number one in the nation, number one in the world. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to travel to Thailand in the next few months to go fight and live out there. Like the things are amazing in my life, yeah. you know, but I'm starting to learn something about myself. Like I, I, it's like an, an evolution that's going on within me that I can kind of explain that I mean, and I don't have the words for it 100% just yet. I'm yeah. trying to do my best to articulate it as we, as we are right now. But yeah. there's a switch that happens 
that it's like it's not all gravy <laughs> you know it's not all it's not all great and dandy it's not all roses and daisies or whatever you know but you need a little you need a, you need a little rain otherwise you don't get the roses and the daisies or whatever you know mm-hmm. so um so i'm starting to learn i'm someone that's not taking any of that for granted like the highs and the lows and the work that i have to get done like yeah there is some things that i have to get done you know and like and, i mean if they taught fighting in school i probably wouldn't have done good at it either because i don't like i don't like, I don't like <laughs> school you know it doesn't matter what what they what they would you know like what about what they taught me in school, you know we always talk about like well they should have taught us taxes they should have taught us um this or that and 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 sure it would work for some people but for me i wouldn't have learned that i, I would have just been like oh it's, that's, that's bs just like <laughs> did every every other subject <laughs> you know it doesn't matter what they try to teach you there but for now it's like trying to take advantage of every situation that you get be 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 open to 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 the to the to new opportunities new circumstances new information be um just uh, and just taking it all in the good and the bad because and you have to maneuver around the bad or whatever you know but like just taking it all in and, and living your dream it takes work too and, and and you love it but it also takes it also takes takes some work so i'm i'm not taking advantage i'm not taking anything for granted any opportunity i'm getting because i'm someone who lived without my dream for so long i'm someone who like for my most of my life i didn't get to do this so i know what it's like to live without it so now that i have it i'm enjoying it 100 percent, enjoying it to the max now thank you thank you for sharing that you're saying that you're trying to work on being articulate but you sounded very articulate to me and i definitely want to <laughs> thank you um before wrapping up the podcast was there anything that you wanted to share to the listeners or people that follow you about any like future plans or where they can follow you or maybe check out as well to support you in other ways as well as you're uh, possibly, like you said, going to, to Thailand in a few months and there's ways to help you out as well. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, so my, all my social media is Robinson who, uh, R O B B I N S O N W H O. If I have that social media, it's, I, it, that's what it is. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, all that <laughs> is uh, Robinson who um, I, I will be fighting um, stateside. It'll probably be somewhere in the summer. I, we're mm-hmm. still working things out. Um, kind of went from overlooked to overbooked. You know, it just it seems like <laughs> I don't have enough time in the year to get all these yeah. fights. And so um, I will be I have a 60 day medical suspension, so I don't get a fight right now for the next 60 days. But by the end of those 60 days, I will be in Thailand. And I will be um, there for three months. When I come back, I'll have some fights. And um, all my fight dates, if I have them, will be posted on my website, robinsonwho.com as well. So there's a link there for upcoming fights. Uh, I am looking for sponsorships. You know, um, Right now, everything that I do comes out of pocket. And that's one of the hard parts about being a fighter. <laughs> and yeah. I'm an amateur fighter, not a professional fighter yet. So I am looking for sponsors. If anyone wants to uh, help me in my journey or or talk about uh, the tiers and sponsorships that I have, that would be amazing. Um, reach out to me on social media, um, any of the social medias, yeah, um, really. <laughs> and then um, I, I have some awesome sponsors that I'd love to give a shout out to. Uh, Mindful Meals that provide my, my uh, keep me keep me in shape. You know, keep this body slim because I love to eat. So <laughs> they they keep uh, great, great quality food, great quality food, and they keep my, my calories count. They keep me dialed in, and it's amazing. I love them. Um, Golden Era Muay Thai Apparel, who provides me with amazing gear, um, and man, they're just uh, they're just super supportive people, and I'm super grateful to have them on the journey. Uh, True Rest Napa, who gives me sensory deprivation um, sponsorships, and um, man, it's been amazing. It's it's really changed my recovery and and my uh, my performance in the ring. I feel like it's it's just been amazing. I, if anyone has questions about sensory deprivation, please reach out, and and um, we can, we can talk about it. It's it's something amazing. I think everybody everybody should do um my other sponsor uh, movement by design <laughs> and my other sponsor <laughs> uh movement by design uh who uh, gives me functional patterns uh, training um uh, and just functional training uh fine-tuned to my sport to fighting and they're helping me evolve my my fight game uh immensely and uh my other sponsor uh, aga media who does photo uh, just an amazing all out guy. He does all my, if you look at my social media, it was probably taking my A game media. So uh, yeah. shout out to all those guys and, and all those uh, all those people that are supporting me in my corner. Um, I will be having a sponsorship program that'll be yearly. Um, so you can do yearly sponsorship that, because that way I don't have to worry about um, traveling because a lot of the time I, 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 I don't take fights or don't I have great opportunities. I can't do them because I don't have the money to do that. So if, if I, I'm going to be a yearly sponsorship program, uh, a little bit, uh, to, to help me maneuver around these, these costs and help me, uh, maneuver around this career path a little bit more smoothly 
so I don't have to give up opportunities and I can uh, make the make the max of these of these next 10 years, you know, and hopefully get into that, uh, you know, into that top 1% that's making some money and, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, like just sh uh, shedding some light on what's going on in, uh, on, in, in different areas, you know, I'm excited. So that'd be great. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Robinson. And for all the listeners, definitely check out his content. I'll try to get as many links on there, down there on this uh, channel, even on social media. But I just want to say thank you so much, Robinson, for making time to be on here and just to provide a lot of great advice, a lot of your information, even about your life as well, what led you up to this moment. Uh, but that'll be wrapping up for the podcast. So thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Peter.